Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would go ahead and discuss the news. I know it's been a few days since it happened, and I haven't gotten around to this, but I was hoping that more information would come out before I discussed it. So let me go ahead and put on my plus five. How to weapon smithing, work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, guys, Constantin, uh, big KK, massive figure in the strength world massive figure in the strength world actually someone who i've actually always kind of appreciated some interesting stuff with his training and everything um he died at the age of 40 which i didn't know he was a year younger than me that was actually a surprise i thought he was a little older than me uh, but yeah he has died and people are saying that it was related to his bodyguard work and i didn't know that that he works as a bodyguard uh, I know he's from Latvia, and I'm not sure if he's been was in Russia at this point. Uh, it's hard to get all the details, but that was my understanding: is that he's been living and working in Russia. He's a bodyguard in addition to being a power lifter. And, and I remember him branching over into some MMA and stuff for a little while. But uh, yeah, he's died, and some people are saying, and there's no reports. We don't actually know what happened to him. We don't know. Some people are saying he was stabbed and died as a result of it. Uh, and for those who aren't aware, this is a guy who has deadlifted over 900 pounds to beltless. In other words, he his world record deadlift did get broken later, like in the 275 class. But he is the strongest beltless deadlifter in the world, or was. No one has ever deadlifted what he has without a belt. And he trains beltless, does all this beltless stuff, and, and the guy's just ridiculously strong. Uh, one of the things I really liked about him also, besides kind of being a deadlift specialist, you know, is that he does all these different deadlift variations all the time and he do like machine deadlifts, uh, just building his deadlift with all the variations. But uh, what I thought was interesting is also he close grip bench presses. Uh, he competes with a close grip bench press in comp and if I recall I know he was benching over 500 with a close grip. Uh, because he feels it's easier on his shoulders. And that's something that I've talked about a lot. I know guys like Paul Carter have talked about that a lot also, of saying, hey, you know, training with a close grip on your bench press is a good way to get in a lot of training volume. Yes, you lift a little less weight, but it moves the, the weight through a further range of motion, and it's easier on your shoulder joints. For, for general buildup, it's actually better. Well, KK, so I was actually calling him Big KK, he trained close grip all the time and he even competed for it with more or less a close grip so I thought that was always interesting and something that I appreciated about the guy is that not only was he a ridiculous absolutely ridiculous beltless deadlifter which you know again something I'm, I'm kind of keen on uh, the guy had a monstrous close grip bench preached the close grip bench trained the close grip bench um, and so again these are things that I, I agree with and he's a perfect example of just how ridiculously strong a man can get even doing this stuff you know these are variations of these lifts that we think of as as the harder variations you can't lift as much weight you know beltless deadlifting right beltless deadlifting uh, close grip bench but that's how he competed and he successfully competed at the elite levels at the world level uh, doing this stuff, you know, and I mean that's brutal strength because I mean we can we can talk about technique on bench and everything, but he's close gripping. You're losing a lot of the ability of even arching by doing that because you're pulling that range of motion back out. The guy was a beast on the close grip, uh, strongest beltless deadlift in the entire world. And, and the crazy part is that he wasn't doing it in the super heavies. He wasn't in the 308 plus class. This guy's doing that in the 275. You know, doing it in the 275. I mean, you talk about just some monstrous strength. Uh, wow. Wow. And that's just something I've always really respected about the man. And uh, the fact that he is dead at 40 years old is really shocking. I don't know the cause of death. And no one, there's no reports anywhere. And I think even all these different uh, strength oriented sites and stuff we were trying to find out, no one knows. It's just that there are rumors that it was related to his bodyguard work. And then at least one rumor has come out saying that uh, he was stabbed. So he was stabbed and died as a result of it. And we just don't know. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to wait to make this video till we knew something more, but it's, it's, it seems like nothing else has come out. Uh, and, and I guess all I can say is um, he's someone in, in the strength world who I respected his, his style, the way he did things. I respected just his straight up raw strength. I mean, close gripping, beltless deadlifts, monstrously strong. 
Uh, and the guy wasn't a fat power lifter either. The guy wasn't ripped, but he at least had some visible abs and everything. I mean, I mean, damn. I mean, what more can you say? The guy was just an all-around beast. Uh, and, and I really wish that we knew more about the cause of death. And uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm at least glad, I guess, that it wasn't health-related in any way from, from drugs or carrying too much body weight as far as sort of what we're hearing. Uh, but it was related to his, his profession. And um, I guess that's tragic, that's sad, because that's not so much even, I guess, self-inflicted. I mean, it is, I mean, if you're in a dangerous line of work, but still, you know, I mean, a lot of people are in a dangerous line of work and you hate to see them die also, you know, whether they're police officers or military or anything else. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to hear about people dying. And I mean, ultimately, if he's a bodyguard, his job was to protect people for a living. And if that's the case, he technically lost his life protecting someone else even if it's a professionally and that's what he's doing for a living and it's for money still you know um he put himself in front of a knife or a bullet potentially that was intended for someone else um so yeah all right so i'm just gonna wait for more news hopefully we'll find out something and find out what actually happened and I will talk to you guys next time, but rest in peace, Big KK. You will not be forgotten, brother.